thought for search engine. I Googled value of family and found the following. Some 30 years ago, UN.org put out a paper stating that families are basic and essential building blocks of society. Not surprisingly, our Torah knew this thousands of years ago when it commanded us to eat the Korban Pesach as a family unit back in Egypt upon the cusp of our becoming a nation. So important was the mitzvah of the Paschal Lamb that Rabban Gamliel, the first person to lead the Sanhedrin as Nasi after the fall of the second Bet HaMikdash, includes it in his list of the three most essential ideas on Seder night in our Haggadah. Rabban Gamliel instructed that to fulfill our obligation of Magid, of telling the story of Exodus, Pesach, together with Matz and Maror, must play center stage at the Seder. Let us therefore focus our attention on the Korban Pesach and the importance that family played in that mitzvah back in Egypt and up until this very day. In order to do this, however, let us understand why we were exiled to meet Shrine in the first place. There are many explanations offered, but for our purposes, the approach of the Barbanel resonates the most. He suggests that our slavery in Egypt was divine punishment for the sins of how B'nai Yaakov treated Yosef. The jealousy and hatred exhibited to Yosef, he notes, was a culmination of what began earlier in Sefer Breshit. Throughout the Sefer, it appears that jealousy was the dominant emotion. First, it was the motivation between Cain and Havel, then Ishmael and Yitzchak, followed by Esav and Yaakov. Every sibling relationship was one of conflict that seemed to be rooted in jealousy. The cell of Yosef by his brothers culminated this terrible behavior highlighted throughout Chumash Bereshit. But one must wonder, why was Egypt, famous in its time as a center of idolatry, chosen as a place to mete out this punishment? The Torah tells us that Egypt functioned as a kur habarzel, a crucible. In other words, we needed to heal by going through the pain of servitude to the Egyptians, a nation steeped in idolatry and immorality. The goal for both the Jews and the Egyptians was to reach the understanding that Hashem is the true God. This, however, explains the, rep the repentance B'nai Israel had to achieve vis-a-vis -vis Hashem. But what about the repentance they needed to achieve amongst themselves? What was it about servitude in Egypt that would help heal the jealousy amongst brothers? The answer lies in the fact that as slaves, we had no time or energy to waste on such trivial thoughts as jealousy and hatred. All our strength was needed for self-survival from the harsh labor we were subjected to. When Hashem finally listened to our cries and we were saved, the mitzvah that he chose to give us was the Korban Pesach because it could unite a divided nation. The Maral of Prague in his Haggadah delineates how the Pesach offering reflects the idea of unity between the Bnei Yisrael and Hashem, as well as between brother and brother. The first law one must note about the Korban Pesach is that it can only be eaten by someone who is circumcised, demonstrating one's loyalty and commitment to Hashem but the Korban Pesach also had to be eaten in one house by prearranged family groups. This law emphasized the concept of unity that B'nai Israel needed to form with one another. Additionally, the Korban Pesach's purpose was to bring harmony amongst the Jewish families. Rev Sarutskin, in his commentary, Oznaim La Torah, points out that the Korban Pesach was the first national sacrifice. It is the only korban in which every Jew must participate. This korban was to teach the lesson of unity between brothers, so necessary prior to establishing ourselves as a nation. Rabbi Rosner, in his Insights on the Parsha, explains that at least once a year, the Bnei Israel would meet to sit together as a family to partake in this korban. If there was any conflict amongst them, they were forced to resolve it. What a novel way to resolve family conflicts at holiday times. The fellowship formed around Korban Pesach was understood so beautifully. 
We are no longer slaves thinking about our survival. We now have the space to think beyond ourselves and realize that we can invite others to share in our largesse. The Korban Pesach effectively created what the Rav coined the Chesed community, a community of brotherly unity. I would like to conclude by paraphrasing Rav Hirsch on the foundation of the Jewish home. Our nation is not made up of individuals or masses of people, but rather homes. People united in family groups, uniquely carrying out its national mission. May each of our families merit this Pesach to retell the story of Exodus based on a sense of love and unity between us and Hashem and our fellow Jews.